board. I think we can go around and introduce ourselves so everyone knows who they're talking to. Um, hi, everybody. I'm Natalie Welch. I'm assistant professor um, in the School of Business. I am kind of the coordinator for the sport management program and the sport leadership master's program that we just started this year. Um, so I am really excited um, for you all to present today. Um, and I also identify as a Native American, uh, she, her, hers. Um, Andy, would you mind introducing yourself? Yeah, hi everyone, I'm Andy Starkle. I'm currently in the Sport Leadership Master's program and I also play football here. Um, and I'm one of two students, me and Keaton Wood are both um, involved in Wild X with the scheduling and organization of it this year. Awesome, thanks Andy. About Kibbs. Hi everyone, I'm Coach Kibbs. Um, I'm the women's lacrosse head coach uh, here at Linfield and uh, I'm here just to support and help out where I can with Wild X. Um, so thank you everyone for being on and meeting with us today and excited to hear from y'all. All right, I like Doug and that'll be our Wild X team. All right. Hello everyone, I'm Doug Heyer, Senior Associate Athletic Director here at Linfield. Started my 22nd year. I'm also the aided, the athletic diversity and inclusion designee. Um, raised in Hawaii most of my life. Uh, my mom's from Samoa, so I identify as Samoan Polynesian, Caucasian. He, him, his. Welcome everyone, glad to be here. Thanks, Doug. And I welcome anyone too, if they wanna throw their info in the chat, um, feel free to do that. Um, and uh, also, Abby, I would love to, if you could um, introduce yourself since you're a little bit newer to Linfield. Yes. Or I'm, to, I'm, to your role at Linfield. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly that. Um, I'm Abby Thomas. I am the new director of diversity, equity, and inclusion programs. Um, at Linfield, and I am also helping as the advisor for um, for Lula this year. And one of our Lula coordinators gets out of class at twelve oh five, so they are will also be um, jumping on soon. But that is my role, and then I will send it over to Ivan. Ivan, why don't you tell us um, like name, major, and that kind of stuff? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um... My name is Ivan. I am a Spanish and secondary education double major, and I am one of the LULA coordinators. Welcome, Ivan. Graciela, you wanna go? Hi, I'm Graciela, and I'm also one of the LULA coordinators here at Linfield. Awesome. Thanks, Graciela. And then Andy, did you wanna um, add anything maybe about WildX? Do you know what we have coming up next week? <laughs> Not, we can save that for the end <laughs> yeah I, I'll pull it up and I can talk about it at the end cool perfect yeah so Abby um whenever it's we turn the floor to you it's all it's all yours okay thank you um so yeah again we'll be looking for one more of our coordinators um in just a minute but maybe um we'll just start with um First question, we'll go with to you, Yvonne. Will you tell us um, what you're studying here at Linfield um, and what you're hoping to do uh, with your degree? Yeah, so as I mentioned, I am a Spanish and education major. And so I would like to be a, um, hopefully high school Spanish and ESOL, English as a second language teacher. Um, yeah. Cool, and Graciela, what about you? I am an accounting major, so I am hoping that I can work for a couple different firms, like public or private, and then I would at one point like to open up my own accounting firm. Very cool. All right, so thank you so much. So they are going to speak a little bit about their experiences as first-generation Latinx college students. We have some discussion questions. Feel free to add questions of your own, um, but we'll go through with what we have and kind of flip-flop, and hopefully um, Trini will join us pretty soon here. So my first question for you is, can you tell me a little about your experiences with applying to and getting into college? Some of what you encountered with that. Yvonne, you want to start? Yeah, so that was, as a first generation student, that was actually hard. 
I started applying to, I wasn't actually thinking about going to college because of the financial um, situation, because of um, my parents didn't go to college, because I didn't have like anyone to talk to me about college before. And so when I came to my junior year of high school during that summer, there was a scholarship opportunity, which is called the Beat the Odds Scholarship. And my teacher was, was like, oh, I feel like you should apply to that scholarship. And I was like, I can apply to that scholarship, but I don't know what I want to do with my life. I don't know when I want to, I want to go to college or just work after high school. And so um, I did a lot of work. I wrote my essays. I, wrote, I asked for my letters of recommendations. I did all of this work in order to apply for that scholarship. And I ended up getting it. And so now I was like, oh, I have the scholarship, but now I don't know what I want to study. And my teacher was all like, oh, I see you as an accountant because you're good at math. Um, you can be like a teacher because you're good at Spanish. And I was like, I don't know. I actually don't know what I want to do. And so then I, um, I, I kept like thinking like, oh, now I can go to college because I have one scholarship, but that obviously was not good to cover like all of like the financial burden that, because college is expensive, right? And so um, after that, I kept looking for private scholarships and I applied to a lot of co different colleges like in Oregon and I got accepted to like a lot of colleges here in Oregon. And so I, as I was writing like those scholarship essays, when it says, or like, what do you want to do? Like when you study or like, what's your life purpose? And I was like, I don't know. And so I just like kind of invented, I wanted to be a teacher. It was of my plans, but I did thought about it. And so as I kept writing it, all of these ideas came to me like, oh, a lot of my teachers supported me when I was like in high school when it came to like, um, uh, tutoring and like extra help or just like emotional support and so I was like oh I can do that to other students and so now that I'm here like in I I first visited Linfield like four times I think because one I just came to like for a tour the second time I came for the Mentes um, conference which is a Latino male conference that um, Linfield College well Linfield University um, host. I came to a scholarship workshop here at Linfield and I came to the Mecha conference also here at Linfield. And so I really liked all of these like different activities that Linfield had and also like the first gen program. And a lot, I talked to like a lot of different students about like how you guys like the school and like, would you guys recommend the school? And so I actually fell in love with Linfield and that's why I decided to come here. And yeah, that's why I'm here right now. Thanks, Ivan. That's great. We're happy you're here. Um, Graciela, you want to tell us a little about, about your experiences applying to college and getting here? Yeah. Um, so my experience was a little hard because as a first gen, I had no idea how to fill out like a college application. I had no idea like that I needed like a uh, letter of recommendations, <clears throat> but I had a, a teacher that really helped me through the process. And I feel like that's how I was able to be where I am right now, because I had no, like I couldn't count on my parents to help guide me and like help me like understand this whole like process of like, oh, I need, like even in high school that I needed like 24 credits to graduate. I need to do all of this stuff to graduate or I need, I should do this so that it can look good on a college application. For me, it was more of, I had to go out and like seek help from my teachers and ask questions and help have them help guide me. And so I had one teacher in particularly who helped me and he was the one that was always like, you should probably apply to scholarships that you don't um, go to school and like end college with a whole bunch of debt. So because of him is why I'm able to be where I'm at right now, because he was the one that helped guide me and helped me like understand that I needed to do volunteer work. I needed to um, have like apply to scholarships, have letter of recommendations and do all of these things. Yeah. 
I'm happy you had a good a good teacher like that. That makes me happy. Yvonne, maybe you'll be one of those teachers uh, in the future. Um, all right, so my next question for you both is, so now you know, you're at university, um, can you talk a little about managing family expectations and responsibility as a first-gen college student? I think as a first-gen college student coming from a Latinx uh, like culture, it's really hard to do that transition, of, especially if you're moving away from family. I'm from Eugene, so I am two hours away from my family. And my mom is a single mom. And so she relied on me a lot when I was in high school. She re relied on me to like help take care of my siblings. Um, I would work and I would help her with like certain bills. So me leaving really did take a toll on her because she didn't have that extra help. She didn't have like who could go pick up my brother from school who can help her like make food at home for my brother. So for her, it was really hard because I was that person who was always there helping her. And it's still hard because I can't go down every single weekend to see her. And I come from a family that we're very close and we're always together, like, at, like in any hard times, any happy moments. And so for me to not be there, it's like hard for her. And it's also hard for me. Um, it's also hard because she doesn't understand that I can't go home every single weekend to this day. It's like, I feel like it's a little different. Like some parents are like, un can understand like, oh, my kid can't come down every single weekend because he has school. But I feel like because I come from a Latinx community, it's a little more difficult for my mom to understand that like, I need to be here and I need to do certain things up here that I can't do while I'm at home. Yeah, um, I agree with everything that Graciela said. For In my case, it's a little different because both of my parents are in Mexico. So um, I've been like, um, um, managing my like, my college life like by myself but I still like feel the pressure through like my aunts and uncles like um they're always like oh what are you studying and I was like oh I want to be a teacher and they're like why a teacher why can't you just be like a doctor or something, like something else and I feel like they always say that because they couldn't like go to college or they don't really understand like your passions or what does that mean so that's been like hard for me to um, still manage like in our like Latino culture. Um, yeah, I think that's all I have to say. Yeah, thank you for sharing that and welcome. Trini is here um, joining us. Um, thank you both for sharing those. Um, so my next question is, how have you navigated resources on campus and what have some of the challenges been? I can start. So for me, um, I'm very shy still. So asking for help is still like hard. <laughs> but I like last year I had I I would hang out with a lot of like upperclassmen with like seniors, juniors, and so I got mo. Um, they were not only my friends, but I considered them like my mentors. So they were like um, give me like advice and talk to me about like, oh, you should do this. You should go here when you need help. You should go do this and that. You should join this club because they talk about this. And so I started doing all of that. Um, I still like find it hard to go to counseling because especially in our um, Latino culture, like a lot of like our parents, for example, they're all like, or oh, you're just being lazy. You just don't want to do that. Like, go work or go do something and for me it's just like oh yeah I don't want to take a nap because that makes me lazy but in reality it's just like oh I need that nap so that I can like relax take a break and all of that so I still find it hard to go like just go to counseling it's still hard for me but like finding like resources through my friends and like the support that they have um it's um different Graciela or Trini, do you want to add anything? 
Uh, could you repeat the question? So the question was, and also the question earlier, if you do want to talk about this too, Trini, one of them was um, talking about how you manage family expectations and family and responsibilities while being a student here, um, as well as navigating resources on campus. Um, yeah, I can talk about both of those things. Um, with the first one, uh, for me personally, I have a younger sister who has some medical conditions and I'm usually the one that has to like set up all of her appointments, making sure that her, like ske her schedule aligns with the times that she has to go get her blood drawn and all these things and calling to get prescriptions refilled. And it's like sometimes I have to go out of my schedule to make sure that I have time to make those phone calls. Cause sometimes you're on the phone waiting for like 30 minutes just to get someone that can actually talk to you. So it's just like more of, managing my time better so that I have time for, to do that. So it's like something that my parents don't have to worry about, especially when there's not interpreters that can talk to them at the pharmacy or something like that. Uh, whereas navigating with resources on campus, um, I'm part of the biology department and there isn't really like a lot of diversity within the department, but um, I feel like just going to professors, that was definitely something that really helped me out. Um, just because like Ivan said, I'm also pretty shy and like in our culture, it's not really appropriate for you to go around asking for help. It's like you have to figure it out yourself, basically. So just letting that ego go away and be like, actually, I don't understand what we talked about in lecture today or I don't understand this topic. I need more help on it. And just knowing that it was something that was OK to do, I feel like was a big step in my education. Just feeling like it was okay for me to be vulnerable and be like, hey, I just don't really understand this. Could you explain it? Or having to explain it more than once. Um, uh, but yeah, it definitely opened a lot of doors and I was able to do research here on campus with one of the professors, which again, is something that I feel like is unique to Linfield because most undergrads aren't able to do research with their professors. Thanks for sharing. Oh, Graciela, go ahead. No, yeah, um, going based off of what like Trini said, like it's very like, again, going back to that, like our culture, it's very like hard to ask for help because it's always like, I grew up doing things on my own, like finding like, you need to find like a way to do it yourself. Like you can't always ask for help, but I feel like learning that no, it is okay to ask for help and be like, I need you to explain what we did in class today. like because I didn't understand it or like going back and asking for help more than once is definitely something that like I had to learn how to do. And that was hard because it was kind of like, well, I've been taught that I shouldn't ask for help and, but I do need the help. And so like being able to learn that like you can go and like ask for help and it's okay. I feel like that's a lesson we're still learning at like lots of different ages, asking for help, yeah. Thanks for sharing that. All right, Yvonne, you touched on this a little bit, um, but to add to it, um, how do you all cope with stress? And can you talk a little bit about your experiences with mental health or how it's viewed in your families? And again, Yvonne, you talked a bit about this. Yeah, so um, last year was really hard for me because I was a freshman. Um, it, I, I would be like, Oh, I needed to, I need to get the work done. I was always doing my homework on time. I was always like I I was I felt pressured. Uh, but then I I talked to like a lot of my friends and they were like, why are you always like are you doing homework and all stress? And I was like, that's that's true. I don't know. I, I just feel pressure, and if I don't do it, I feel like I'm not like um, rewarding my parents because of their sacrifices they made or because of like. Um, all of these scholarships that are paying for my education, I feel like I don't, I'm not doing that for like for them. And so um, this year, it's been like um, I've been like um, anal analyzing or like um, learning from my previous experience that I, like it's okay to take time for yourself. It's okay to like um, go out for like I don't know on the weekends and like just get a, leave your homework for a second. Um, yeah, and also um, I mentioned already, but it's still hard in our um, Latino community because our parents and a lot of just adults, there's a lot of like ideologies that um, us, the younger generation don't um, 
take into consideration anymore. Like I was mentioning how like people see it as like being lazy if you like go to sleep for like an hour or like, um, I don't know, just like doing something that has nothing to do with like homework or with school or work. Um, adding on to what Ivan said, I also feel like um, the Latino community is also like growing in their awareness of mental health, I would say. Um, from my personal experience, I had a severe concussion uh, senior year of my high school and that put me in a really bad place mentally. And um, my parents didn't really know how to help me out. And thank God they um, actually searched for resources on, in our community and they got to understand why. I was really depressed. I didn't really want to talk to anyone. And I feel like that allowed me to have more of an open communication about my mental health with them once I transferred here to Linfield. Um, one of the things that always sticks with me that my dad always tells me is that if he he's always like, I know that I won't always understand the struggles that you're going through because I've never had to deal with that amount of stress or especially with like the pre-med track that I'm on. I have to take several classes there really rigorous and require a lot of time for me to study. And he's like, I'm never gonna be able to understand what you're going through, but he's like, I'm always gonna hear you out, try to give you the best advice. He's like, but also try to look for other classmates that you can talk to because he's like, they'll be able to give you a better advice at this point. So it's like them trying to navigate the way that they can help us, but also making sure that they also um, support uh, my decisions to talk to other people about what's going on at home or things like that. Because many times, I feel like within our community, you're not really allowed to discuss your family problems outside of your family, um, which is something that's very strict. And it's like, you're not allowed to tell other people what's going on at home, but my, thankfully my parents have moved away from that. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> for my mom, it was a little hard to understand like that mental health is important. Like she didn't really, kind of like what I haven't said, like it's seen as like, if I wanna take a nap and just like de-stress and like, I need that nap to like, just get more energy and like in order to be able to continue with my day, it's seen as like being lazy, not wanting to do things and like trying to avoid it. When in reality, it's like, no, like I need that like 30 minute nap so that I can continue with my day. Cause I've had like a really long morning. And so it has been hard for my mom to understand it but she has come to like learn that mental health is a thing, that depression is a thing. And so she has been like very supportive. And I feel like as a first gen, we also kind of have to like educate our parents a little bit and like have them like teach them that like mental health is a thing, like depression is a thing. And it's not us just being lazy. It's like that we are stressed out. We have a lot of homework, like we have a lot of exams. And so it does take a toll on us because sometimes there are weeks where like we can't have a social life because we have to focus on our education. And so that does take a toll on us. And I think having to like teach them and like have them understand that that is a thing has been like a little hard. Thanks for sharing that, y'all. And again, if anyone has any other questions, feel free to jump in or throw them in the chat. Um, my next question for you is, how um, can you talk a little about your family's experiences, um, you and your family's experiences throughout the pandemic? Um, for me, I lived with um, my aunt last year. Um, and so she has like five kids and I was there. So it was hard, like um, I wasn't able to like have my own space to like be like in a meeting or in a classroom. If there was a lot of like dis distractions with like little kids. Um, I, it was, it was just hard to like concentrate. Yeah, I know that's that. <laughs> Uh, for me personally, like Ivan said, it was really draining and stressful uh, just because like, as I already mentioned, I have a younger sister who's severely immunocompromised and obviously uh, 
my parents work in jobs where they're constantly in contact with people and it's not something that they can avoid and obviously we didn't have the financial means for them to take time off or do anything like that um so it was just like for me i had to make sure that they were on top of their schoolwork so i was basically making sure that they would go to class literally push them out of bed when they didn't want to and make them sit in front of the computer but at the same time making sure that I was in time for my own classes. And there was the times where they'd be like, hey, I don't understand what the teacher's talking about. And it's like, I'm also on Zoom in class and it's like, they're asking me for help. And it's like, how do I navigate that? Um, while making sure that I'm also staying on top of my own things. Um, and my parents were like, just try to help out as much. And it's like, it was like kind of like pressure of me trying to keep up my grades, but at the same time, making sure that they were on track and like basically becoming a second teacher for them because they didn't have a lot, of, a lot of resources. And I would say that, unfortunately, the way that uh, elementary schools like went about the um, Zoom school, I guess, it was like really hard because they didn't know which students were struggling or which students weren't. So it was really stressful when also having to take on extra chores at home. That was also really stressful, like having to clean more often, having to go out to groceries and do things. It's just like taking time away that I could spend studying for OCHEM or things like that. And as my class got more like loaded with homework or essays to write, it was just really complicated just times like where sometimes you would just have to like cry it out and be like, oh my God, I can't do this. Yeah, when COVID hit, it was very difficult. Um, like Trini said, as the oldest, I had to navigate my Zoom classes and also help my brother and at the same time we like we couldn't afford for my mom to like take some time off so she had to work in the mornings and I have a three-year-old sister so I had to stay home and take care of my three-year-old sister and attend Zoom classes um, because my brother would be in class also so I would literally be sitting down and next to me there'd be another chair with my three-year-old sister sitting next to me. So, and it was the most difficult thing ever because three-year-olds are not, they do not stay still. So she would always want to pop in in the camera and I'd be like, no, like, I like had to talk to my professors and be like, hey, like, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to be able to turn my camera on. Like, this is my situation. I am at home taking care of a three-year-old. And it is going to be very distracting if I have my camera on and my three-year-old sister is just like popping in. So I like talked to my professors. I let them know what was going on, but it was still very distracting that I had to take care of her and like be in class at the same time. So when COVID hit, it was a struggle for me. Thank you all for sharing about those experiences. As someone who taught middle school, um, on the other side of that Zoom camera, that perspective is really, um, really necessary. And I think, I mean, I'll speak for myself as a teacher, you're dealing with your own frustrations. You kind of forget that. You kind of forget that students, you know, you're sort of dealing with your own struggles from that end that you might not necessarily even see the three-year-old and know that that's what they're going for, going through. So thank you for reminding us and sharing that, sharing that. Um, what kind of growth or changes would you like to see at Linfield regarding support for first-gen students? Uh, Abby, I just saw the question that was posted on the chat. Um, oh yeah, do that. Was it like coming back to campus? Uh, from my point of view, uh, it was like really hard, like taking that decision to actually come back to campus just because I have three younger siblings who'd be at home alone while my parents would be working. And it's like, do I really go back and like my parents really need me right now what's the best thing that I could do for my family and for myself as well so it was like really tricky and I literally cried about it several times because I was like I want to go back to school I have friends there I have my own life built at Linfield but at the same time it's like what if something happens at home or something comes up and there won't be anyone who will be with them and that, I mean they're all like in their preteen, so it's not like that big of a deal but still like something that really worried me um and I guess it was just having conversations with my parents and them being like 
you're at a place where you're now going to have to make your own decisions and they're like we're not going to hold you back so they kind of like figured out their own schedule to make it more like I guess freeing for me to actually come back to this to Linfield and they actually pushed for me to come back because they were like you need to take a break this time has been really stressful for you but again it's just like having that sense of like oh yeah I'm not doing the best that I can for my family right now like feeling selfish uh yeah like what Trini was saying I felt when I was coming back to campus that I was being selfish and it's kind of hard to like see it like as no I'm not being selfish like I am doing what's like best for my education but it is kind of like I did feel like I was being selfish when I came back because I left my mom like to struggle with my sister like she struggled so much because daycares weren't open and so um she ended up like taking her with my grandma but my grandma is a little old so it is a little hard for her to take care of my sister and so I felt like leaving her and leaving my grandma to take care of my sister was like very selfish of me because I came back to campus and I like was focusing on my education um even though I know that that's not how it was it's kind of hard to like like know that it's I'm not being selfish and that I'm just doing what I need to do. Can you repeat the question again? I'm sorry. Oh, Ivan, I was just curious about how, what it was like, you know, you talked about going through COVID and the challenges with that, but then making that decision to come back to campus and um, if that, how, how, if it, Obviously, it's very usually very challenging for a lot of people. And um, if you had any special circumstances or anything, uh, any stories about coming back to campus after COVID or in the middle of COVID, really? So yeah, so for me, it was different um, than Graciela and Trini because they were already like um, they were already here at Linfield, and I, as a first year. Um, student, I was happy to come to like Linfield. I was excited. I wanted to leave home because we were just there like at home, like doing nothing. But when I came here, like during COVID, it was a whole different experience. Like I was just in my room joining in my classes and I was like, when am I going to go like to my actual class or like, when am I going to be able to see my professor? I could have done this like at home. <laughs> and so um, it felt for me, it felt that I was I wasn't being productive because I would just like wake up and join the Zoom call. And then after that, just like go to bed, like, I don't know. Um, so it was actually hard to manage that, um, the Zoom things. And also that there wasn't really like a lot of like um, social activities outside of like um, school and like these clubs because there wasn't really like an opportunity to join like a club it was um, through Zoom, and that was really hard, too. Thanks for that question. Um, yeah, thank you clubs, all for sharing. Yeah. Speaking of clubs, um, can you all talk a little bit about your roles in Lula and your goals for that organization, kind of what that means on campus? Well, I'm one of the coordinators this year. Um, I did it during the pandemic as well. Um, I feel like one of my biggest goals in the club is just to build the sense of community within the students that attend the meetings, just having it be a safe place where we can talk about literally anything. And also it serves like kind of like as a mentorship in some kind of sense, just because my first year here, like I said, battling, battling with like imposter syndrome and depression it was nice to have upperclassmen there that were like hey try this or do this instead just like them giving me ideas that were actually like useful and also just having a place where we can like I don't know talk Spanish or just talk about like things that we watch on Instagram or reality shows that are really popular within the Latinx community it's just like fun to have that place where you can chat about those things and not be looked at as like weird because nobody knows what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, I'm also one of the Lula coordinators for uh, this year. 
And like Trini said, one of my goals is to build that like sense of community for the Latinx uh, community here at Linfield and like have a place where we all feel safe to share about like family problems or like I am feeling this way and like being there to help them guide them and like have them understand like no like if you take a nap it's like not you being lazy it's you taking care of yourself like having them have that place where they can come and talk about anything and we can all relate to like yeah I understand like my parent also would feel this way so like you're not the only one and so I feel like that sense of community is something that really would like to build. Yeah, I agree with, um, I am also one of the coordinators for this year, and I agree with what um, Graciela and Trini said. Um, I'll join the club because I wanted to feel like that I belong here, that I am part of like Linfield. And now that I am a sophomore, I want to like, last year I was a member and I was still like, I would go to every meeting, but it wasn't like, um, like this year I would say, because this year is more like in person, we have more activities for like students. And so um, I wanted to like give what like, um, I wanted to join because so that we can make other students that they feel safe and also create a space where they can like see people like them because for example, in our classrooms, for example, in my psychology classroom, I am the only Latino there. And so I don't really find like people who look like me or like I can't talk to them because they don't look like me. I feel like isolated and like, I don't know, it's just like a weird feeling. And so like going to Lula is different because you see people who speak the language that you speak, um, they, um, they look like you, um, yeah. And also on the educational aspect, like educating about like um, what's important for the Latino community. How can as Latinos, how can we help we help each other? Um, and yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and you all do you do just that. The meetings are exactly that. You can in conversations with alumni, you know they talk about how Lula, formerly LCLA, was was that place, and you're continuing that legacy. And every every week, you do that. So thank you for that work. You guys are amazing. Um, all right, my next question is: um, What kind of growth or changes would you like to see at Linfield regarding support for first gen students? I think that there's some things that Linfield has already started, especially with the first gen program. Um, that wasn't here when I first came to Linfield. And, and so I, looking at the program and seeing what Lula members talk about it, um, like we had several people talking about it last night in our meeting. And I feel like they were talking about it in ways that they were like, it was actually really helpful. Like having someone guide me through, I don't know, registration or telling me what classes were better or like what professors to take if you're like a certain type of like learner. Um, I feel like that really helps students out, especially when they're first gen, because like many of us don't even know that we have to declare our majors at a certain point of our college career or that registration really, you have to have a plan so that you have all of the classes for your major done by the time you're a senior. Because um, that's not something that's talked about in our family or anything like that. So it was, it's really helpful, but at the same time, I feel like there could be more, I don't know, a sense of like understanding uh, just from like professors, staff and everyone just in general. Uh, I feel like there's many people who sometimes just don't understand like the family dynamic or things like that. And they don't understand why we have to go home and we can't really focus on schoolwork while we're at home because we have expectations that we have to live up to and just like like maybe just an extra hour or something like that of like an extended left line actually really helps um and it's not just us being like really lazy or anything like that it's actually us trying to comply with all the expectations that we have both at home and in school uh, and just i don't know i feel like with the whole situation in our country right now it's like really hard for us to like share our struggles especially with in the first gen latinx community um, especially with like parents that are undocumented or like get deported and people don't understand how that really affects your family dynamic. And I feel like if professors really understood that 
like that really has a big impact on you or if like an aunt or uncle get like deported it really impacts you because like family is a big aspect of what it means to be a Latinx student. Yeah, um, I agree with everything that Trini said. I feel like the first gen um, program is really helpful. Just having like a peer mentor and a faculty mentor, like they would always like check up, check up on us. Um, that really helped me a lot. My, I remember my <clears throat> faculty um, mentor. She would always like send us emails every week and like check on check on us and those resources that there's available here at Linfield. She would be like, join this club. It's really good. And if I had any questions, I would just like email her or like go see her at her office and stuff like that. So that was really helpful. Um, something that I will I would like to see. Um, a change in is like Trini was mentioning, like professors need to understand like that as first gen, we it's like a whole concept. It's not only like, oh, we're first gen. And um, that means that we don't, we don't know how to navigate college, but it means like we also have like uh, family problems or all of this stuff behind us. So just for professors to get to know their students so that they can like help them in like any way possible. Yeah, I mean, touching on what Trini and Ivan said, it's uh, like the professors have a really big impact on us. So like what Trini was saying, just that one hour, like extension, it helps us so much because we're apart from being first gen here at school and like navigating like the education, like learning, like that I need to graduate with this amount of credits I need to do, like declare my major. Like we're also first gen in our family. And that means that our parents rely on us a lot. And it's hard being first gen in school and being first gen at home and like being able to do both at the same time, it gets very overwhelming. So if like, our professors understanding that is very helpful for us because it's like, okay, like I have that support from my professor, like I can rely on my professor. And if I come across like something at home and I need to like not be in school, like I know my professor will understand and like I'm not scared to ask for like an extension. But like sometimes when professors are like, no, like we're not giving you an extension, then it's kind of like, uh, I don't know what to do. Like I need to take care of my family, but I also need to do good in school. And so then it's a lot of pressure for us. Thank you all for sharing that. Um, yeah, that sounds like a lot of pressure. And um, I appreciate the way you mentor other Lula students and kind of navigate and walk them through dealing with those, those ups and downs. Um, Trini, you mentioned this the other day when we were chatting and I think again recently, um, how how do you deal with imposter syndrome? Um, I'd say it's like a really big question, uh, just because we talked about. I don't know if you talked about this question already, but like when people just see you just as a first gen student, they also forget that there's many other different titles that you can put on yourself like I'm also indigenous from a Mexican uh, culture and I'm also like the first person in my family to even graduate from high school or all of these other things and it's like coming here you see everyone and you feel like everyone has this like perfect little world that everyone had a giant like graduation party that everyone has everything figured out like when you go to the first day of class like everyone has their textbooks everyone has as like the brand new laptop or everything like that. And it's like, for me, it was like really hard because like financially I was struggling my freshman year. And it was like, I didn't have the textbook with me the first day of class. And it was like, well, I'm an outcast because like everyone else is prepared. Everyone is eager. And it wasn't that I wasn't eager or I wasn't prepared to go into the class. It was just, I just didn't have the means to actually show that, show the professor that I was prepared, but I was more than eager to be here. I had all the energy to actually like tackle down that class. And I feel like, I don't know, it's just really complicated to explain it. Cause like, it's just a mix of emotions of saying, oh, like I'm not the typical college student that you see in the TV. Like 
I don't go out to parties every single weekend or I'm not the uh, sorority girl that you see casted in every college movie. And it's like, my struggles aren't like portrayed in like these kind of films. And it's like hard to know, like, am I actually struggling or is it just me complaining and me like blaming myself for things that aren't even in my reach? yeah um same for me i still it's still hard for me to like cope with that i feel like i'm here because i have to not because um i decided to be here and it's still like oh um i needed to apply to college i needed i need to have a career i need to have a like i don't know i need to support my parents and it's still like hard to know that uh, or hard to acknowledge that I'm here because of my own like effort, my own like um, skills and the sacrifices I have made. Um, just because in our um, Latino culture, there's a lot of like pressure on, on us. Like, oh, you have to go to college because we didn't have the opportunity and we're giving you the opportunity to go. And I feel like for a lot of students that is still hard, a, a lot of like um, people don't want to go to college. They want to do like something else. Oh, I want to go to trade school. Uh, and so that's been hard to acknowledge still for me. Yeah, I mean, going back to what Trini was saying and like not being that like normal kid who is prepared and has their textbook and is like ready to learn. Like I remember my freshman year, we were struggling economically and I was not able to buy my books like right away, like first day of class. And so seeing everybody with their textbooks, it was kind of like, I felt like the outlier. And it wasn't that like, I didn't wanna learn. I didn't wanna buy my textbook. It was more of, I felt bad asking my mom for money and being like, hey, I need a hundred dollars for a textbook. Cause I knew that we were struggling at home. So I think it's just very difficult from our end being that normal kid, like even like joining a sorority, it's something that our parents don't really understand what sorority or fraternity life is. And like them seeing like, why would you want to like spend so much money to be in a sorority? Like it's these things that I feel like as Latinos, we can't really do because our parents don't can't, don't understand why we want to do those things and so it just kind of makes us feel a little bit like like the outlier um thank you thank you it, i'm i'm so happy i'm so proud of you guys and i'm so glad you are here and that you I don't know, the pathways that you're paving and the, you know, you use the word normal and not normal. Um, you know, you you are the new normal and you're becoming the standard is these, you know, these students who are um, coming from backgrounds that you have and just relentlessly pursuing, you, you know, who you're supposed to be. And I am just grateful for you all. Um, does anyone else have any questions that they would like to ask? Um, I have a few more, but we could just open it up. Yeah, Doug. I, I just wanted to share that after hearing you all tell your story, I had a deja vu moment. Uh, Polynesian culture, very similar to the Latino culture. So you're not alone. Um, you know, 35 years ago, I had to go through the same process. You know, my parents had no idea about colleges. So grateful we had counselors and teachers that kind of guide you through how to go through the process. And then uh, uh, family was hard, you know, being from Hawaii. I mean, you're on a plane and, you know, you have to save your money just to get uh, airfare. And then when you had family problems, there's nothing you can do. It's hard. I mean, I, I hear you. And then uh, when you talk about uh, money, I, mean, I had to wait to work study checks to buy books or buy deodorant, you know, to some, some of the necessities. And you see everyone else have all these luxury items where you're just happy to be able to go to school. But... I hear you, and I just want to say you're not alone. And there's a, you know, a lot of Polynesian culture is very similar, so many ways.
Yeah, I just wanted to echo that too. Um, I think a lot of the underrepresented uh, groups kind of pass to share a lot of similarities, but society kind of forces us into these, like into these uh, silos where we're not able to rely on one another as much as we possibly could. Um, uh, I, and there's another really great question in the chat, but I was just also gonna add, I know Ivan, you were talking about early on how you felt pressure that like to know what you wanted to do. Um, and I just want you to know, like, you don't, like, you don't have it figured out. Like I've had like five careers and, um, it ne you know, even when whatever degree you get, like, it may not be exactly what you do, but what you'll get from Linfield, I think will be a lot more than, than just that, just to that degree. But, um, yeah, so I, I'll, I'll read the question in the chat. It's really great. Um, uh, about how do, um, any, uh, Latinx alumni, have they, been able to help you or um, either Linfield or non-Linfield? I actually have a perfect example of that. Um, as I mentioned before, I have plans to attend medical school, hopefully after I get done here. And um, Carrie Burke, who's actually in the meeting, uh, she connected me with a previous student who attended Linfield who navigated that process. And I just feel like that's where alums really step in for us, just like they have been through the same pathway or had the same similar struggles, financial struggles, family struggles. And so it's really helpful to see that someone else that has the same values as you has like gone through this process and you're not the first one and you can talk to them or like get help or just like literally ask any questions to them because I feel like the person that I'm in contact with now really like I can be like, hey, I just really don't know what to do for this next part and they're like here's what I did here's what other people that I know did and it's just like really helpful just to know like it gives you kind of like a sense of um, direction to where you should head towards yeah I think uh, alum have really been very helpful uh, in that sense that like you're not the first one to go through this there are more people out there so like you can overcome this and like it's just a moment like and it'll pass and you will do great in the future and so having alum who have been through like similar problems and like helping you like help guide you has been very helpful um I know like if I have a question and I can reach out to an alum and they can like help me and like help direct me like Trini said that's it's just very helpful Yeah, um, I agree that our alum are very helpful. Um, I, as an education major, um, I'm part of the teacher, um, bilingual teacher scholars program uh, here at Linfield. And part of the um, programs like, um, um, how do you say, like, something that they offer is to bring like Linfield alumni and talk to us um that that we know they are now like work doing the the career that they want wanted to do and one of the alumni that i really got connected to was um i'm pretty sure all, all of us know him it's antonio um he has the same major as he graduated with the major that i'm pursuing right now and every time i have like just a random question oh what class did you take for this or like um what class would you recommend and he would always be like answering my questions like and just any question that i have Giselle is also a really amazing alum. If you don't know her, you should already know her. We graduated together and she's 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 great. Thank um, you, Abby. Me and Abby were actually the coordinators back in the old days um, for what we called LCLA. I have to remind myself it's not Lula now um, when I mention it, um, but I just wanna say um, that I really appreciate all your words because um, I resonate a lot with what you're doing. Um, and I just wanna say it definitely, once you graduate and get a job and you get in that financial stance and all that, it honestly, a huge burden is lifted from you. Um, I've been able to help my parents so much through COVID. Um, so I know it's hard and it's difficult. And what you guys are saying was kind of making me tear up, um, but I really appreciate it because it needs to be said um, 
all about mental health, all about um, financial struggles, the class struggles, the language barriers, being the first daughter or first child, you, you um, get all those responsibilities. So I just appreciate you guys bringing it up, say, using your voices, Linfield, and just wanna say um, as an alumni, I'm more than happy to talk or sit with you guys, buy you coffee, because now as a college graduate, it makes a good wage. I can buy you guys coffee and you guys don't have to worry about using your flex uh, card. So um, I invite any of you to reach out to me if there's anything I can do. Um, I have had several jobs and positions. Um, and one thing that I hugely encourage our Latinx students is negotiating your salary. Um, because one thing I learned is that helped me really with my imposter syndrome is um, being paid what I deserve. Um, so if you need any tips on that, uh, feel free to reach out because I've been lowballed and then turns out there's a lot more money out there that they would have pay, uh, not paid me if I hadn't asked. So just throwing that out there for you guys. So thank you guys for talking about your experiences and your stories. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that's about our time. Thank you for sharing, being open, being vulnerable, and thank you everyone for listening. Um, we appreciate it. Yeah, oh. thank you. Thank you all so much um, for sharing. It's really, um, it takes a lot of uh, courage to kind of share with people that you don't know. And um, But we all are here, I think, to help you in any way that we can. And um, feel free to reach out if any of us can be of assistance. But Abby, I know you want to plug Sunday, right? Sunday, yeah. Do, uh, Yvonne, do you want to just pick you? What's going on on Sunday? Yeah, so that's what I was actually going to say. Um, everyone's invited to our Hispanic Heritage, Heritage Celebration um, from one to five. We've been putting a lot of work um, for that big fiesta. So hope to see you there. Awesome. Yeah, we will definitely make sure we're there. Um, Andy, do you mind plugging really quick what we have going on next week? Yeah, and if Gerardo also wants to speak on it, um, I know he's heavily involved. Um, we will, so for the next while, X, we will be discussing the results of the campus climate survey. Um, so that should be a really interesting conversation. Uh, Gerardo, if you have more information yeah. on that. I'm happy to come in. So if you recall last spring for about a three week period, we opened up a diversity, equity and inclusion campus climate survey. 803 people, students, faculty, and staff responded. So we've taken the last several months analyzing all the data. And uh, on, on Friday, uh, right this time next week, Jennifer Ballard and I, Jennifer was just here in the room with all y'all, uh, we're gonna present the findings. So it's, um, everyone's welcome to come back. You'll see the perspective from students, from faculty and staff uh, of how they experience Linkfield. So come on back. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Gerardo. And again, thank you to our students who joined. And Giselle, I'm so glad you could join us as well and um, make these connections and just share your stories and your experiences. So I um, hope everyone has a safe and happy weekend. And hopefully we'll see you all on Sunday. Bye, everyone.